Okay, so we are live. I'm going to turn on this light. So I got a little more light for the unboxing. And I've got another unboxing for you. And this is G.I. Joe Classified Series Dreadnought Ripper. Now, uh, this is going to be a really busy week because I've got all these figures that I pre ordered on Amazon. And they're all coming in pretty much this week. The only one that seems to be lollygagging is General Hawk. I don't know what the holdup is with General Hawk, but uh, I got buzzer yesterday uh i got well technically i had him i think saturday but it was too late I, I i did the video on him yesterday by the way if you've not watched my video on buzzer make sure you watch my video on buzzer i had to do it on sunday because i got so much crap coming up and, and uh a lot of times my vi for whatever reason my videos that i upload on sunday get kind of neglected so if you haven't seen that one yet you definitely want to watch that one because you're watching the unboxing of Ripper, you want to see Buzzer too, right? You want to see all the dreadnoughts. So, uh, got him yesterday, right before I went to work. Got uh, Shockwave yesterday, right before I went to work. They were both in the same package. So, Shockwave is actually a figure I'm a little more excited about because he's one of my favorite GI Joes. But uh, since I got Buzzer out of the package already, I feel like I need to get Ripper out of the package already. Speaking of dreadnoughts. Very dreadnought heavy week because I also got this one that I pre ordered the uh, Transformers crossover Thunder Machine with uh, the Thunder Machine transforms into Soundwave. So that should be fun. And uh, tomorrow, uh, that's when Agent Helix is supposed to show up. So that'll be uh, all the figures that I know of that are supposed to be shipped this week, unless they wind up shipping Hawk a little bit early, which hopefully it will because it still says that it's due on uh, December 4th, I think. But they usually wind up pushing those up anyway. I think they just kind of do give you a conservative estimate as to when you're supposed to get that. Also, I believe that the uh, Nunchuck figure that I pre-ordered, that should be, uh, it says that it's supposed to release on December 14th. So hopefully it won't be much longer before I get that one. I'm just going to go ahead and cut this since I know where my exacto knife is right now. I'm going to put it right there on my coffee table. So, uh, so yeah, uh, much like with, do I have that one handy? The box that Buzzer came in. Did I put it somewhere around here? It's starting to get really cluttered around this area. I really need to clean this area up. You can't really see it so much on the camera, but trust me, it's cluttered. A lot of action figure packages. <laughs> so. Uh, so yeah, I don't see what I did with the box for Buzzer, but uh, oh, there it is. Is that it? No, that's that's another. That's a stalker I just opened the other day because I needed some parts for a custom. So uh, well, we'll just go ahead and talk about it. So uh, the background is very similar to the background. It's probably the same set that they made for Buzzer. You got the Cold Slither poster in the background and some of the instruments from <coughs> the Cold Slither music video. Littered with lots of empty grape soda uh, cans. So uh, the Dreadnoughts, of course, being uh, very fond of grape soda. So, uh, and then we got a nice piece of buzzer. I'm sorry, buzzer. Huh? Buzzer was yesterday. We got a nice piece, picture of Ripper. Nice little painting of him. And uh, love the expression on his face there. Again, a lot of character to it. And then we've got... Uh, you know, uh, a graphic of the loadout with all the stuff that he comes with, his rifle, uh, pistol, a knife, and the uh, Jaws of Life accessory. So uh, let's go ahead and open him up. He's number 102. He's got a QR code on there, which I've still never scanned any of these QR codes. One day I'll have to scan one and see what's up with it. So, and here is Ripper out of the box. And, man, he is one pug ugly SOB, isn't he? <laughs> the colors are a bit darker than I would have imagined them to be, uh, particularly the pants. Let me, uh, let me get Buzzer from over here so we can compare. I would have figured that the Dreadnoughts would all have kind of like the same color jeans, but, no, you can see that uh, uh, Ripper's jeans are much darker than Buzzer's. By the way, uh, if you watch the original video of Buzzer, which I, I hope you do, 
uh, <laughs> uh, you'll see that I have straightened up this chainsaw. It managed to straighten up after uh, just being hit with the uh, uh, hair dryer for a little bit. Also, his holster kind of fell down on his leg while he was in the package. So we'll go ahead and straighten some of this stuff up. It looks like uh, his uh, armband also slipped down. He has a spiky gold armband. And for whatever reason, one of these uh, plastic tabs, uh, the one that goes over his right elbow, uh, didn't quite tab in. So I'm not going to complain about that. Especially since this one on his right elbow is being kind of a pain. So, yeah. He's got a really nasty expression on his face. And he's got a lot of tattoos. A lot more tattoos than I remember the original figure having. I don't particularly remember the original Ripper as having tattoos. I guess they weren't as distinct to me as, as uh, some of the others if he did have them. Uh, he looks like he's got like... I can't quite tell, but it looks like it's a little teardrop tattoo over here, which uh, I, I believe in in terms of prison tattoos means that he killed a guy. But I would have figured Ripper would have killed much more than one guy. He'd have so many tears tattooed on his face. He would look like Robert Pattinson when he takes off his, his leather gimp mask in that Mr. Vengeance movie. So I'm going to go ahead and try to straighten up the uh, the holster. I'm going to pull that over like uh, over the uh, thicker part of the holster, so hopefully I'll stay there. And I, I try, already pulled up the uh, armband a little bit. He's got a spiky wristband. It's like a dark brown with some bronze spikes on it. And if I compare his arms to uh, Buzzer, I do think that they, they uh, actually gave him some different arms. They seem a little different to me. Anyway, it's kind of hard to tell on the bicep because of where they put the tattoo. But the, the deltoids definitely look different. So they might have reused the same bicep, but I don't think they did. I could be wrong about that, though. So maybe it's the same bicep. It's not the same deltoid. But it'd be kind of strange to me if they'd bother to re-sculpt the deltoid and not the bicep. I don't know. That's just kind of an odd choice so uh we'll go ahead and talk some more about the figure before we move on to the accessories so he's got that kind of like darker blue pants they're almost like the the shade of like a cobra troopers pants uh these are definitely new boots at least uh, boots i haven't seen before so they're new to me and i suspect that they're new legs as well since a uh, buzzer had new legs now comparing to uh, Copperhead, because as I said during my Copperhead review, I was kind of suspicious that they they might have uh, put Copperhead on a slightly smaller body than I would have chosen, because they were probably planning on reusing this torso for Ripper, and I do believe that they are the same torso. Looking over them, I believe it's the same uh, the same mold that they used for the torso on Copperhead. So. Uh, He's got a web gear that uh, goes over his shoulders, and he's got a little peg on the back. So uh, I'm guessing his rifle will go back there when we get that all put together. Uh, he's got a knife sheath over here, a couple of grenades. There's some spikes over the, uh, the shoulders of the harness. He's got a camouflage tank top, and then he's got some tattoos on his arms. He's got Grim Reaper over on this deltoid, and uh, what looks like some kind of uh, Japanese demon face over on this bicep. And then on the forearm here, he has what looks like uh, some claws of an animal ripping through his flesh from the inside. So uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool. And much like with the original buzzer, he's got a mohawk, but it's kind of a mohawk where it looks like uh, he hasn't shaved his head in a long time, so he's got some so almost like a buzz cut over there. So I, I pretty much tend to think of that on buzzer as being not necessarily that like, you know, it was a stylistic choice. He just hasn't shaved his head in a, a few weeks. So to me, that makes more sense. I don't know. And he's got like this long beard that he probably needs to trim, especially if he's 
planning on shooting any YouTube videos. So, uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, like I said in my review of Buzzer, Buzzer is probably my favorite of the Dreadnoughts because the Dreadnoughts are all fairly stupid, by which I mean they're not very intelligent. Uh, but Buzzer is the exception because he actually is quite intelligent. He's a college professor, so he's an educated man. But uh, the other Dreadnoughts all tend to be pretty dumb. Uh, but in the case of Ripper, uh, he actually is kind of an idiot savant, at least in some versions of the comics, where uh, he's uh, actually got some surprising business acumen. I think that came from the Devil's Due comics, where he actually had his own uh, alcoholic beverage company, which, of course, specialized in hard grape soda. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I do remember on the original Ripper figure, he had this necklace with, like, these kind of uh, nondescript, almost sort of rectangular objects. I couldn't quite tell what they are. But uh, on this one, it's quite obvious what they are. Uh, he does have some razor blades on this necklace around his neck, and there's even a razor blade on uh, on his earring. So that's pretty cool. So he's got a little chain on his belt. Uh, I think that's pretty much everything to say about the figure. So let's go ahead and move on to his accessories. He's number 102. Again, there's the number. Dreadnought Ripper. Got a Cobra symbol on there. Technically, the Dreadnoughts are not, like, officially a part of Cobra, but uh, they do obviously work with Cobra quite frequently. And they've uh, at least been affiliated enough with Cobra that they uh, have done security at various Cobra installations like Springfield or Baraka Beach or Cobra Island. Uh, they uh, presided over the tribunal for uh, Billy's attempted assassination of Cobra Commander. If you guys remember that. So, even though they're not technically 100% uh, members of the Cobra organization, they're still, like, at least closely affiliated enough with it that they'll put their, uh, the, the emblem of Cobra on, you know, a lot of their vehicles and things like that. And sometimes they're even depicted as having Cobra tattoos. I think in one of his earliest appearances, Torch, has a, a cobra tattoo on his uh, on his shoulder. So I'm going to set some of these accessories aside over here. So we're going to talk about all the accessories. So here we have uh, this Jaws of Life accessory, which uh, they they kind of modified a bit from how the original toy was. And I do remember that the original toy I wasn't really too fond of because I just didn't understand, for one thing, what it was. And for another thing, it was really awkward to get Ripper to hold it. But this one is clearly more designed uh, to be held by an action figure. So it's got a, a kind of a, a grip back here with a trigger. So obviously that's what controls the mechanism. And this grip up here, just to kind of hold it all in place. And his elbows are really stiff. So I'm just gonna try to coax him into place. Don't ever force your action figure joints. That's a good way to break them. But, you know, uh, usually I can kind of gently coax it into place. If I can't gently coax it into place, a lot of the times uh, I can use a hairdryer or, you know, even dip it in some, some hot water if you got to. By the way, this handle here is articulated, so that can aid a lot in uh, how we're going to pose Ripper when we get them all put together. Let's go ahead and get that up there. So that's what he looks like with his uh, Jaws of Life accessory. And uh, they are kind of geared in such a way where if you move one of the jaws, it will move the other. So, and there's like an exhaust here at the back. Probably a good thing that he has this spiked wristband because uh, I would imagine it would it would burn if uh, his, his forearm were to accidentally hit that exhaust pipe somehow. He does not come with a backpack like the original Ripper came with a backpack. And that one had like kind of a, an engine on the back. So you can imagine, since it had like some cables, some of those uh, plastic hoses like they like to apply to G.I. Joe figures back in the day, uh, 
since, since it had the cables connecting the jaws of life to the backpack, you could kind of imagine that like the, it all functioned together. But the way that they've got this one redesigned, it's like it's got the uh, the 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 motor built into the device. So unlike with Buzzer, where I feel like he's missing something in terms of having uh in terms of lacking that uh gas can, I kind of feel like you know at least they made up for it in this one and gave him some other accessories. So uh, that having been said, since I've, I've been over this now, I'm going to take it off and set it aside. Uh, real quick, I'm just going to look it over. I was kind of wondering if maybe it might be able to peg onto the back as well. Like I said, I suspect that's where his rifle will go. But uh, I don't see a way for him to uh, hurl this onto his... They could have put a backpack peg on here. I think that would have helped. Like maybe if they put a backpack peg on like the underside of it, and then you could kind of peg it into his back when he's not using it as if he was carrying it around. Like on the underside, I think would have been the best place to put it, so it wouldn't be too obvious when uh, when he's holding it. Okay, so probably what I should have done first before I did that is uh, take a look at some of these accessories. So on the original Ripper figure, we had this knuckle knife. It was a sculpted detail on the character's chest, but here they actually have it as a removable knife. And I've mentioned before in in uh, some of my reviews uh, of uh, uh, Stalker was one of the ones I mentioned in how uh, when I was a kid and uh, Stalker and Grunt and Hawk and Breaker and Snake Eyes all had the same torso where they had that knife uh, in, strapped to the web gear. And I always thought that would be really cool if it was removable somehow. But, you know, action figure technology back then is not what it is now. So now they can actually give Ripper a knife that is removable from the sheath on his torso. So and he looks pretty cool while he's holding it, doesn't he? So let's go ahead and take that back out of his hand. And we'll put it in the sheath and see what that looks like. And that looks damn good. So uh, I probably should have put it in his left hand, though, because if you see how it fits into the sheath, uh, it's clearly meant that he would grab it with his left hand. So, and then this pistol, uh, kind of an unusual looking pistol. Uh, I have no idea what kind of, if it even actually is a pistol when I'm actually looking at it. It might even be like uh, uh, just some kind of gun that he's converted into a knife. It seems kind of going backwards to me, but you can see it's got like almost like a bayonet to it, but it looks like it would get in the way of the, the barrel. So I don't know if uh, if it really counts as a pistol or not, but regardless, it fits into the holster just fine. Let's go ahead and put it in his hand. I suppose you could imagine that it's some kind of uh, uh, ray gun, some kind of like pulse pistol or laser pistol or you know, something he would have gotten from Cobra. And then he modified it to have the blade on it. So, but it is, it is, uh, it is an unusual looking weapon. I will give it that. It does fit in with the Dreadnought aesthetic. So I'm not going to complain too much about it. And then the other accessory that was loose in the envelope is the glasses. And much like with Buzzer, um, I'm not going to try to keep the glasses on him for the whole review, but we got to see him with the glasses, don't we? And I do think that they fit onto him a little better than Buzzer's glasses do, but they don't seem like they would stay on there like uh, too firmly. If you were uh, uh, a kid playing roughly with it, I think they probably would fall off. So much like with Buzzer, I'm probably going to wind up gluing the glasses onto mine eventually. I'm going to put his and Buzzer glasses together so I don't lose them. Because I'm going to glue those on later. So, and this elbow, like I said, it's really stiff. So it's going to have to work out there. But I definitely want to have the elbow cocked because we're going to move on to his last accessory now. And... Thank you so much, Hasbro, for putting this in a cardboard sleeve. You know, the last few uh, G.I. Joe figures I've opened, they haven't had the cardboard sleeve over the rifle. And that's been uh, disappointing to me because the rifles wind up getting kind of 
uh, warped in terms of the packaging. So this was when I was a kid, my favorite of the accessories that uh, Ripper came with and we're missing something because there's supposed to be a clip for this. So that it must still be in the bag or something. But there it is, a rifle with a nice uh, big blade on it. Is it in the bag? This is why I hate these bags. Stuff will get lost in there. I've accidentally thrown this away. But yeah, there's the ammo clip. So we'll go ahead and put that in there. I'll put it in there the right way. I, think I might be putting it in there the wrong way. It does seem like it's more narrow at one end for whatever reason. Dang it. Uh, is this even supposed to fit in there? Because it looks pretty shallow. It's weird that it's tapered like that. I wouldn't have expected that. Maybe it goes in like that. I don't know. I'm not sure how it goes in. But something I always thought was uh, kind of cool about this particular rifle is that, to me, it always bore a really strong resemblance to the uh, the G.I. Joe laser rifle, the one that would have come with Snow Job and would have become the uh, the standard G.I. Joe laser rifle on the animated series. But for some reason, they've chosen to give this one like a, an ammo clip. Maybe it's a power pack. Maybe he actually did get a hold of one of these G.I. Joe laser rifles and converted it into his own rifle. And uh, that's an extended power power pack or something like that. Give him a little more extra energy. It's not staying in there very well. So I'm just going to take it out. I'm just going to leave it out. So since I'm just going to imagine it's one of these type of rifles that he, you know, stole, got off of a G.I. Joe that he uh, killed or something like that. Like you can even see the stock is the same exact shape. I think this one's even closer to this laser rifle than the original one was to the original laser rifle. So I'm going to leave the clip out. I don't even care. It's not staying in there very well, and I'd have to glue it. <sighs> but I think I'll just leave it out for now. Because it doesn't really need it, I don't think. Because it's a laser rifle. So here we go. And he doesn't hold it quite as well as I would like, because their grenades are kind of getting in the way a little bit. So... But and if we stretch his hand out a little bit, he can uh, he can grip the front of the rifle. But then that pulled wound up accidentally pulling his hand off of this rifle. His finger did go into the trigger guard originally, but I just slipped it out accidentally. His hands are, are a, a nice uh, pliable kind of plastic. They're not too rigid. That's something that I, I often have a hard time with with these uh, G.I. Joe classified figures is, is how rigid that their accessories are. So there he is with the rifle. Looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get a shot of him next to Buzzer, both of which without their sunglasses because <laughs> I haven't glued them on yet. But that's pretty much what that looks like. So uh, they did a really good job with uh, Ripper. I think in some ways they might have even done a better job with Ripper than they did with Buzzer. Uh, I do think his glasses stay on at least a little bit better than buzzers, but I'm still going to wind up gluing them on anyway. Uh, I don't know exactly when Torch is going to come out, but hopefully it will be sometime very soon because, like, uh, having these guys together, it's like it's like having Larry and Mo with no Curly. You know, it's like <laughs> we don't have to even have Monkey Wrench to be Shem. <laughs> so uh so yeah but uh, i am pretty happy with how this figure turned out hopefully uh considering as well as uh as ripper and buzzer turned out when we do get torch hopefully he'll be worth the wait and then there's you know the other dreadnoughts they could make they could make you know zanzibar by the way i remembered from uh my buzzer video i was having a hard time remembering the character's name for whatever reason naga hide that's the uh, the Dreadnought Poacher. And I really like Naga Hyde, but I didn't really use him as Dreadnought very much. I used him more as an independent contractor on his own. He'd hang out with the Dreadnoughts sometimes, but he wasn't really, like, like hardcore a Dreadnought like these guys. You know, he, he, was, he was just kind of like, you know, a friend of theirs that would kind of hang out with them sometimes. So, uh, so yeah, so, so far in the uh, 
G.I. Joe classified line, we have Zartan, we have Zorana, we have uh, Buzzer, we have Ripper. So we would need to have uh, Torch, Monkey Wrench, Thrasher, Zanzibar, and Naugahyde. Am I forgetting anyone? Is there a Dreadnought that I'm forgetting? I can't seem to remember another Dreadnought. Just seem to have completely forgotten if there was another one. So, uh, but I'm pretty sure that's all of them, right? That's that's all of them? Okay, yeah, that's, that's at least from the original. I know there was later ones like Burnout or Heart Wrencher or whoever they would have as like a con exclusive, but I'm not, I'm not going to get into all that. So, tomorrow, uh, my intention is he fell over tried to set him over here on my work table and he won't he won't stand up he's had too much of that hard grape soda so there we go hopefully it'll stand now so uh tomorrow uh i will have for us to watch uh i will unbox this uh shockwave figure and i'm looking forward to that because you know i love shockwave he's like one of my favorite gi joe characters he was uh, one of the last figures that I bought when I was uh, still playing with action figures. I bought a few later on, just as like an adult collector. I, I, I felt like I made the transition to adult collector when I was 13, because that was when I, I wasn't really playing with action figures anymore, but I was collecting. So, uh, but yeah, this will be the one I have tomorrow, which will be Shockwave. I'm really excited about that. And then uh, uh, also tomorrow, uh, Helix is supposed to show up in the mail. So I'll probably be opening her up at some point. I don't know when I'm going to get around to this bad boy, though, because this is obviously uh, it's Transformer and it's a vehicle and it's going to be fairly involved. So that might even be sometime next. It depends on when I have a day off. I haven't had a day off in weeks. It's been crazy. So uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a break and then I'm going to come back and we're going to do an episode of Batman the Animated Series. And then I'm going to take an extended nap before I have to go to work. But if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure that you like and subscribe and all the fun YouTube stuff down below. If you haven't seen that buzzer episode, make sure you go and watch it. Because like I say, uh, a lot of times my videos that I do on Sunday get neglected. But I had to get it out of the way because of the timing issues. So uh, make sure you watch that one. Anyway, we'll talk to you next time. Bye.